in the last recording, we did a breakdown on the hardware on a Siemens PLC TIA portal setup. Let's actually get into TIA portal itself. This is the default splash page of TIA portal. Um, there's two views, and you may, may notice some things very that are different here with TIA portal. In other programming softwares, there might be a separate communication uh, software that you could utilize or a separate HMI builder that you could utilize or separate this, that, and the other thing. Well, the nice thing about TLA portal, it's called totally integrated automation, meaning everything you need is in TIA portal. Um, this is what the splash. This is what the first page you should be looking at when you get in, um, and it will give. You, and this is portal view. It will take some time to get used to. Um, in theory, this will walk you through every step of creating a, pro, a, a program. Some may, some like it, some don't. Find you, as you get used to things, you'll say, "Oh, I really like this." Oh, I don't. But regardless, this is where things open up, and this is where you can open up old projects. And you can see I have a bunch of old projects that I've um, got together. Uh, I can create new projects. So I can create new projects. So and everything needs to be given a name. I can migrate projects. So source you know, from something from uh, an another processor or something like that. I can take a welcome tour. Uh, so you can go through and take a look at all, all the new tour and all that fun stuff when in doubt. I don't have time for all this, so I'm going to keep going. You can also look at your installed software. So this will tell me what I have installed. Uh, this is totally integrated automated portal, WinCC Basic. That's the uh, um, panel view editor. Step 7 Basic, Service Pack 1, Update 8. Now. If you have only Step 7 Basic, you will only be able to do the 1200 series. If you have a professional license, you can do the 300 series. But if you have 300 series processors, you will need to pick something different. Uh, the older style, uh, uh, the old way of programming Siemens. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay? So keep that in mind. So here is this is all this is all the stuff that's embedded in the start menu. Now, if I start creating a project, these other things will show up. I just need to mention online diagnostic. So if I want to go online to figure out what devices I have, this is where I go. And I can click on accessible devices. This will bring up a screen. As you can see right here. If you look at your type of PG, PC interface, that's what computer interface I'm communicating with. Is it PNEINE, Profine Bus, um, Teleservice, USB? This is how you're going to try to find your processor. And you can have multiple cards on your, PL, your, your computer, so, so you would then need to figure out which way you want to communicate. I actually have a simulator, so I could actually look for the simulator on the computer itself. I'm just going to select my current uh, processor. If I hit start, it's going to find everything that is Siemens based. And we'll see if it'll, and so it's, it's searching, it's searching, it's searching, um, and it's starting to find stuff. Okay? But look, here's what's fun about Siemens. It's finding every computer that has TIA portal installed on it that's connected to my network. So it's it's finding all my computers that have Siemens. So if you want to make sure your computers has a Siemens installed and don't want to turn on everything, you could come in here and look. Um, it's giving me the ether the uh, network address for all this as well and connection type. It's also giving me my, me the MAC address. So notice in the hardware where I said, hey, make note of the MAC address. Well, take a look right here. This will tell me if I'm communicating with the right processor. So if I go back to my PowerPoint that I just did with my hardware, 
you can see right here my pro my MAC address for my processor. And if I go back, sorry, I gotta find it. There it is. It should match. So two eight, you know, two eight six three, three. You know, it matches. If I want to know for sure, I can hit flash LED, and it will flash the three LEDs on the front end. So it gives me visual representation. So if I want to look at this processor, I can go down here and hit show. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? So it's going to bring up what's currently in that processor. In this case, that processor is back in my lab. I'm up in my office, so I won't be able to do too much, but it's going to show me my devices. And it's in this portal. It takes a it's in this portal that I can go and look and see what's on there. So this is now in my project view where I can go online and, and do some diagnostic work by clicking on online diagnostic. If you see yellow, or if you see this orangish yellow color, this is, means you're online with the processor. And if I wanted to, I can stop it, put in stop mode, and you can see it goes to amber. I can put it back in run mode. So meaning it's got to go. Um, I can do a memory reset as well, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later. It gives me my article number. It gives me my rack, slot, information, everything I need to know. Um, its name, et cetera, et cetera. Some other things that's important at this point. It can give me all my changes and display and local time. But what I, I'm most going to be concerned about is right here at the ProfiNet interface. Does It gives me my net, MAC address, but it can give me my IP address as well as I, the subnet mask. If I'm having trouble communicating, this could be the issue. Now, Siemens will give, your, give you a way to have a secondary IP address if your computer does not, if you don't have admin rights to your computer. It's best, though, if you're plugged in directly to the processor itself with the Ethernet card. So just keep that in mind. And it will give you a, a, a port determination. A couple other things that you can look at that's important. You can change this IP address directly here from online diagnostic. You can change a subnet mask. You can set time. So time was taken from the you know, t you know, take from PG, if I hit apply, if you look, now it's this date and time that's currently there. That's nice. You can update firmware. So if you have a firmware file that you need to update, you can browse and update from here. You can assign it a name. Right now it's PLC1, but I can change it to whatever I want. But here's the best feature. I can reset factory default. So if I look, open up programming blocks or program blocks, you, you, you can see, and I, I'm not going to go too much into depth here with this, um, you can see that there is something, some type of program here. But if I go in to reset, reset fa factory settings and hit retain IP address and hit reset, Watch what will happen. It'll take it. Now, watch what happens. I'm going to hit update accessible devices once uh, think it, the processor reboots. And if you look, the uh, IP address is still here. But let me see if there's doesn't look like anything is there anymore. So this is a good way to, especially if we're in classroom purposes, make sure that things get wiped so there's not residual programming. Okay? So that's going online, doing some basic maintenance.
again, I access that from portal view and accessible devices. Um, this will allow me to communicate and figure out what's out there and allow me to reset uh, a PLC that I might have lying around. I can do the same thing with the HMI as well. Uh, functions, uh, reset factory setting, and I can do that as well. So in the next lecture, we'll go in and actually create a project from scratch and add hardware, but this will at least get you online, start communicating, and, and, and being able to do some basic operations. All right. Thank you for your time.